do rot. Our team of young people collects food waste from households and businesses and transform it into compost in Bushwick, Brooklyn. We're going to share a little bit about how to make a vermicomposting system, otherwise known as a worm bin. Here are some worm friends. Um, vermicomposting is an amazing home-based system. These worms are capable of detoxifying uh, chemicals, both organic and inorganic. It's free of pathogens. It helps plants uh, build up resistance to both pests and different diseases. Um, it's super rich in nutrients. You'll hear a lot of people talk about red wigglers, and that's a special type of uh, worm that will essentially thrive in a lot of home composting systems. These worms are usually closer to like the surface versus other worms that burrow deeper. Um, they can eat a lot of organic matter in a day. They also reproduce pretty quickly. They're pretty adaptable in a range of um, moisture and temperature conditions. 55 to 80 degrees is the ideal temperature range. They can survive like a, a little bit of a range colder and a little range like hotter, um, but they just won't be eating as much during those conditions. We also recommend not introducing uh, red wigglers or their babies into your local outdoor gardens uh, just because it can be an invasive worm too. drill and a one fourth inch bit is ideal. Optional also is sometimes people have like a tray and they drill holes in the bottom because there's liquid that starts to accumulate so for it to empty out. Um, and also you can get screen or wire mesh from a hardware store or today we're going to practice using, um, we have a lot of burlap bags on site so using that as a screen to keep out smaller pests. So your bin size is going to depend on how much food scraps you're producing at home. If you have one pound of worms, that means you can add around three pounds of food scraps throughout the week. Worms also over time will like reproduce so your system can build out. Uh, the limits on how much they'll grow is basically how much food you give them and how big their container is and it'll just take some time. Um, so we're going to demo doing it on this bin. Add the worms in and I would also give them food. 
Uh, for a bin around this size, I would start with two pounds of worms. If you're going to do a smaller system, like one pound's a good start. And again, they'll start growing and building up the space if you're feeding them regularly. If you already have some vermicompost that's finished, you'll move everything in it to one side. In the now empty half, you'll lay down bedding and you'll put your food scraps there. And so that'll encourage all the worms to move there and then around a month, then you'll just have this compost that you can harvest. I'm not planning to harvest anything here, so I'm just gonna be adding food scraps. If it's slightly frozen, that's also fine or good because it adds, it can add moisture to your bin. Um, things that you want to avoid adding, I see it right there, uh, so citrus. They don't really like it when it gets too acidic, um, so we recommend limiting the citrus that you're going to add. Again, if it's just like one small thing, um, it doesn't matter. Um, do you like this mango? You want to make sure to also take out if you see any trash or things like that, um, but then you can cover it up. Things to keep an eye out in your worm bin system. You should check up on them regularly, um, seeing if the conditions are moist enough for them. They don't like it when it's um, they don't like it when it's too moist. Like there shouldn't be like a lot of like water seeping in it. That's why also it's great if you have holes in the tray system in the bottom. You can also monitor that by maybe adding some extra bedding or adjusting that way. Um, and they also don't like to be too dry. So if it's getting pretty dry in there, again, you could either add frozen food scraps or um, if you have a spray bottle with water you've left out for 24 hours, you can spray that down too to give them a consistent store, uh, source of water. Um, check up on your friends, um, make sure you're in, when it's really hot out in the summer, you're putting them in a place where it's like relatively cooler. Um, they, worms don't like the sun, um, so you'll want to make sure the lid's on and that they're being able to stay in a space that's like relatively cool. Um, the wire in the mesh is good for deterring like other insects from going inside there. The NYC composting project recommends even setting up maybe like a trap for fruit flies if you start having fruit flies or you can freeze your fruit scraps that will kill any fruit fly eggs. There's one thing about like melons, like for pests when there's too many, I think it's those jumping things. Uh -huh. Like if you put a melon in the in the compost system for a little bit, the, all the like pests will gather on it and then you can take that out and throw it out. You can find worms through the NYC compost project also, if you're located within our delivery zone, we will deliver a worm bin and or worms to you. For more information, check us out online at bkrot.org or email info at bkrot.org. Thank you for joining us and happy composting!